let's shift gears into some more serious content. Uh, we're going to talk about forwards now. We've got a bunch of questions about the forward line. Eric asked, what do we think we should do in regards to the attacking players? Griezmann, Dubai, Fati, Messi, Aguero, Trincao, Dembele, Brothwaite. Seems like too many players uh, to him. And Eric, we, I think we agree. That seems like a lot of players. So who would you offload assuming Memphis is coming in? And that also depends on whether or not there's two in the front or most likely there's going to be three up top. Um, I think Brathwaite is out um, because I think he will actually leave. He will be convinced um, because he just seems like a thoroughly decent person. And if you tell a decent person that you're not going to play um, with his mindset of having a couple of years football left, he would probably want to go somewhere where he can play and he'll be grateful for uh, the very unexpected two seasons that he had uh, at Barcelona. Um, Griezmann is not going anywhere. The amount of money on his contract is absurdly high. So uh, there'll be very little takers uh, and there's still a huge amount of amortization uh, on, on his deal for deal for the next three seasons. Also, his wife is Spanish. Um, how many kids does he have? A couple, I think, who, yeah. who are growing up here. So he's not going to want to leave Spain. Yeah, explain that to our listeners before you go too far off about the contract, about the amortization. Okay, so we paid 125 million for uh for Griezmann but when a club signs a player uh they don't necessarily like there's there's the cash flow the money that they pay and there's the accounting accounting wise that 125 million is spread out over the years of his contract so what that means is that uh, a player will cost 25 million per year plus his salary plus his agents agent fees i guess spread out over the five years of his contract uh, this also means that if we sell Griezmann after two years, we will have accounting wise paid 25 million for his first year, 25 million for his second year. We sell him. The 75 million that is left of that 125 million transfer fee is going to count as a loss on our books. So that means that we need to sell him for 75 million just to offset the loss. It's probably easier when you see it on paper than when I explain it. No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, it, it makes sense that there's the cost that, I, I mean, it's, it's the same principle that we applied to the Arthur Pianet swap deal as to why that was such a benefit to Barcelona to get rid of Arthur because they were able to bring in that transfer money up front. And as we, you know, this is an oversimplification of it, but that Pianet's deal is over multiple years. So if they're able to get X number back on the back end of that contract. So now they don't have to resell him for 70 million they just have to sell him for what he's worth over the course of the three years that, or four years that are left on his deal. So yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that, yeah, that makes sense to me. So yeah, just to, that was an explanation on Griezmann and Barcelona, is, I mean, Levan has hit it on the head that he's just too expensive is Griezmann. And with the, the economics that are currently going on in the transfer market, PSG and Man City are the only two clubs that could afford him and they are not purchasing him. So uh, you, you know that Griezmann is going nowhere. Yeah. Nor, nor would you want to go to those places. Right. So that's the problem. And the club would need to pay us 75 million and be willing to take on his, uh, his salary, which is a huge amount for a player who's already 30 years old. Uh, so even if they say, okay, well, let's pay 25 million, we get rid of his salary, it would probably be worth it for us if we can accept the 50 million loss on the books. But still, Griezmann probably don't, will not want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, what I do think, however, is that if Kuman wants a midfielder, um, who makes runs into the box, who can pass and combine the ball, and who will be an excellent defender, then he already has that in Griezmann. Yeah. Um, especially if he played a 3-5-2, because our 3-5-2 worked best when we had Fran Frankie de Jong in the back line, and when we had Griezmann playing behind Messi and Dembélé. So I think that could be a solution for, for Griezmann. Then who do we have left? Uh, Dembele. Will he stay? Will he go? We just don't know. Um, I would want to renew him because he, even though he's inconsistent, um, he's got so much talent. And also for very selfish reasons, when I go to the stadium, um, I love to see players like, like Dembele. I know he doesn't always play well. I know he can be frustrating. But in today's football, where everything is so robotic, 
-hmm. and everybody always does what they're supposed to do, Dembélé is just so much more fun than 99% of the other players out there. So um, for a very selfish reason as a spectator, I, I like to, to have a player like that on our team. Um, Depay is signing very smartly for two seasons, um, which kind of... You know, I would like to sign him for five seasons because part of my reasons for wanting to sign him is, hey, if it doesn't work out, we can sell him after two seasons. I guess that's not going to happen. Um, so smart move on his part. But he will probably um, improve our squad, even though, uh, like we saw yesterday, he does not always play very well. When he's on, he's on. But when he's off, oh boy, he's off. Um, the, the biggest factor is Ansu Fati. Yep. Yeah, that was, that's where I was going to go with this. That Tereshu Gas, how can you play Griezmann and Dubai in the same starting 11? Uh, and Levon, if, if it's Griezmann in the midfield, I think you deserve a lot of credit. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much Barca listens to our podcast, but I can say that uh, Griezmann as a midfielder has been a Levon idea uh, that I think would also, again, support that, I, that notion that we saw that Dembele was kind of forced to play a false nine at times this year. And now imagine Memphis to buy in that position, a player who's much more comfortable taking on that role alongside Messi. So that is, I think the only way that to buy Messi and Griezmann will work together. Um, all that said, I, I think you almost kind of throw part of that out the window because yes, Dembele's contract, I think seems to be the domino effect on whether or not, I mean, Trincao sounds like he's not going to be sold though. He very well is probably going to be loaned out just because for his development, it doesn't make any sense as a player. And also to have him even in the squad, doesn't make any sense to put a 21 year old across 30, 35 million euros, to have him sit on the bench for a whole year. doesn't make any sense. Um, and then Aguero is also floating out there, but we've talked about him in the past. We've talked about how many, the expectations for him. And I think his role for Argentina is actually very similar to what he's going to be doing for Barca. That's just who he is now at this age. Um, but yes, the Fati health is the other big question. I said on Monday show, if Fati is hundred percent, I'm starting Fati over Depay 10 out of 10 times if Fati is 100%. But is Fati 100%? We got a lot of questions on what's the progress. It seems like he will be healthy for the season. He will most likely take it slow in preseason. It's going to take a little while to get up to, to, to 10th gear or whatever it, it takes him to get back. Um, it's In today's day and age, it is not crazy to think that a player that young is going to be able to come back to be 98% of what he was. That's not a crazy notion. I mean, again, to go to the NBA, uh, I mean, Kevin Durant played 48 minutes two nights ago, 48 the entire game when he tore his Achilles even a year ago, right? And you remember the Pistons, Isaiah Thomas, when he rolled his ankle, he was never the same. And that was just a sprained ankle, an extremely terrible sprained ankle and that ruined his career in what what he, what he was a 1990 or 1991 when that happened and now kevin durant at the age of 31 tears his achilles which ends careers over the i mean and he's seven feet tall and he comes back and he's able to play 48 minutes i mean he's also superhuman so not every player is like that but Fadi seems to have i mean to be able to debut and do what he did at 16 there are things going on in his body that are not going on in my body or LeBron's body or most likely our listener's body. It's a, he's a different level athlete. So I think of all these, I mean, so many of the players that I think that if, if Busquets had had that same injury at 18, I'm not sure if he gets back to be 99% of what he was just because of, again, like what he's made up as an, you know, he's very durable as an athlete. He does a lot of different things, but he just doesn't have that, uh, the, the ability that Fati had even to recover from, would you know that he had a broken leg? What was it? Three years ago when he was in the Academy? No because he's recovered completely and fully from that. Um, so yes, Fatih's health, a major question. Uh, and I think that dictates where everyone else on that forward line goes. I mean, even if Fatih's 100%, Dembele might be looking around in January, depending on how much Kuman is playing to pie and what that starting lineup was. Dembele might just think, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go along with my contract, but if you want to sell me, sell me now in January or sell me next summer so you get something for me or else I'm just going to leave on a free transfer. Well, I think that Dembélé, they'll tell him this summer, hey, either you go or you spend the whole year in the stands. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we actually have a president who has the um, heart or the strength <laughs> yeah. to do this. I, I was going to say another body part, but... Fortitude, um, fortitude is the word. <laughs> fortitude, ah, fortitude, very nice. So I also think, however, that if Dembélé renews, that besides Messi, if you want to play Messi as a false nine, which you might want to do just so that, you know, uh, our defense, we can cover for him on defense, then we don't have anybody who is as good as Dembélé on the right. 
the Pi does not play on the right. He can play for, starting from the left, or you can play him as a nine. On the right, he's not that comfortable. I suppose you can put Griezmann on the, on, on the right, but if you put Griezmann on the right, he's, go, he's going to make a lot of the same movements that Messi already makes. So that, that's not going to combine very well. Uh, you're not going to play Fatih on the right. You're going to play Fatih on the left or as a nine. Um, Aguero, for the times that he comes on, he'll be a nine. Um, Trincao, probably not going to stay because we also have Collao. And yeah. Collado plays best on the right, but Dembele is still a lot better than, than Collao at this time. Um, so we'll see. I think another thing that you can you can do is say you can play Messi behind Griezmann and Depay, for example. Or you can play Messi on the right and Depay on the left, Griezmann in the middle, and have especially uh, Depay and Griezmann, they can change positions a lot because both of them like to drop back, but both of them also make vertical runs. So I think they, they can create interesting movements together when, when they play together. There's just a whole lot of combinations possible. And I hope that Kuman rotates a lot as well because I'm a fan of rotation. Yeah, I mean, I think the final big question, I mean, I, I feel like after 265 episodes, one of the themes is that we tend to talk about Messi last. We bring up Messi last because he just seems like this inevitable thing that exists, right? That he's just going to always be starting. He's going to play 90 minutes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he's always going to be there, as you, you said with the answer to the first question. Um, and it's very likely, and we're expecting him to be there next season. But as far as even Dembele, what happens if you sell Dembele in January next summer and then Messi's gone anyway, and now you're left with Griezmann? And I mean, God forbid, Fatih isn't 100%, right? So now you've got... 60% of Fati, no Messi, Griezmann, Depay for one more year. You just sold Dembele and now Messi's gone, right? And then Aguero has one more year left and we'll see what, right? So it's very, very easily you could descend into this apocalyptic, you know, cataclysm of forwards very, very quickly. Um, but again, there's still plenty of time and a lot will change till then. So, right. And just to add to that, what we also see a lot once players are 34, 35, 36, all of a sudden, they are injured for half of the season. Yeah. Sergio Ramos is a very good example of this. PK, last year. Yeah, PK. Uh, Puyol, well, Puyol has like an injury map that is uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, populated. Yeah. But there is also that risk where, you know, Messi will be 34. Um, and the season after that, 35, even if he renews, is not guaranteed that we're actually going to see him for two full seasons. 